that was lovely. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Okay, a little enthusiasm wouldn't hurt. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. That sounds so much better. The Holy Spirit is here. We're supposed to be alive and excited and happy, you know, those things. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Celia Halfaker, and I am thrilled that all of you are here today, and I am thrilled that you are worshiping with us online as well. Please take a moment and register your attendance and the pads provided for you in the pews. We want to honor your faithfulness that you are supporting this congregation with your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. And if you are worshiping online, just uh, reply to the text message or, uh, that you received or make a comment in the comments section. We also want to honor your faithfulness uh, for those of you who are worshiping from a distance. And while you're doing those things, I want to remind you that next Sunday, because we are Methodist, we are eating. <laughs> for a, a number of reasons, we were not able to hold a pastor welcome potluck or meal last year when I got here, mostly because I was in the hospital. Uh, and so we've decided to hold that this year, <laughs> next Sunday. Uh, so following our worship service, bring your favorite dish. I will bring something with corn in it. You will all eat it before I have a chance to get in there again. And, and we will share our time together, and I will feel very welcomed by all of you. Uh, so that is following our worship service in the fellowship hall is where we will be. Um, also, if you haven't done so already, I want pictures of you and your fathers, of all of you and your father. You know what I'm trying to say. I don't know how to get my pronouns and nouns to match anymore. Um, I want pictures of you. Send them to me by carrier pigeon, by email, by text, by Facebook Messenger smoke signals, however it works out best for you. I want those pictures. We have something special planned for Father's Day. And we have an announcement this morning from Debbie. Three little announcements. We need your used inkjet cartridges. There's a box for them in the Welcome Center. The UWF are collecting used pill bottles. They need to be washed and have the labels removed. That is not a wrestling group. It is our United Methodist Women, but they're UWF. July 1st is when we need those. Bye. We have a wish tower in the Narthex for Vacation Bible School. We'll take your money. And there's also little stones on the front of it that have specific things that we need for VBS. So if you want to take one of those stones with you and bring back your gift for Vacation Bible School, we will gladly put them to use and thank you for your generosity. Did I cover all of that? What else for the good of the cause this morning? One back here. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. Yes, our, our UWF is uh, fulfilling a hospitality uh, role for the annual conference that is happening this week in McAllen. Um, so if you have baked goods or food in general that you'd like to donate that would be in snack form, uh, we will gladly ferry those over to uh, the hospitality room in McAllen. But we need your stuff. Okay. Anything else? I invite us then in body or in spirit to rise and let us be called to worship. Surely the presence is number 328 in your hymn. Let's sing first. Sure. 
Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. your spirit on us, God, so, so our, our young, young people, people will, will prophesy. prophesy. Give us a vision of your kingdom born anew. And, and let our, our elders dream, dream untamed dreams, dreams of, of new beginnings. beginnings. Amen. Let's pray together our opening prayer. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We long for your presence, your renewal, your inspiration in our lives and in our church. Come and fill us with your hope, and give us a new vision of your kingdom, a new way to live as your children. We ask in the holy and blessed name of the triune God. Amen. Please be seated, and I invite our United Methodist Army workers to come forward. It is time for us to pray over you. We are sending out a team of missionaries this week, these young people and young at heart people. We'll be going to Cathedral Oaks in Weimar, Texas, the big city of Weimar, Texas, uh, to do a lot of work in the warm sunshine. I'm so excited they're going. <laughs> so I want to invite all of you who want to come and lay hands on them, not in a mean way, but in a, in a prayerful way to do that. Otherwise, where you are, please lift a hand of blessing for these young people and their leaders who really need our prayer. You know, you look a little creepy. I'm not gonna lie. He's making this face. Holy loving God, God of mighty power, God of great vision, God of small deeds and wondrous works. We pray that your spirit would go with these young people and with their leaders, that they would be your presence in Weimar, that they would reflect your love, that they would reflect your glory, that they would reflect your presence in this world. Lord, we ask that you would keep them safe. We want them to return home healthy and whole with all of their fingers and toes. We want their leaders to come home sane and we know, Lord, that you are the God of miracles, so you can make all of this happen. Lord, watch over our young people. Watch over our leaders. Allow them to experience the joy of building your kingdom, brick by brick, nail by nail, word by word, hug by hug, shoulder by shoulder. And we will be careful, Lord, to give you all of our thanks and all of our praise. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I believe y'all have to go work now. Load up the van and be careful. Okay. We have very good leaders for them. We don't need to worry at all. It is time for us to share our lives with one another, our joys and concerns. Uh, I do want to ask for us to continue to hold our brother John Chosey in prayer as he is finally listening to a doctor and taking some time to let his body heal. Uh, I ask that we would also pray for our choir members. You may have noticed they're a little trim on the ground these days. Uh, COVID has run through the choir. Uh, and so, in an abundance of safety, we have asked them to stay away from us with love in our hearts. Uh, and they are doing well, they are recovering, but uh, we want to hold them in prayer. 
We continue to hold our brothers and sisters in Uvalde in prayer and our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. What joys can we share with each other this week? Yes. Your daughter graduated. And we say, thanks be to God. Two down, two to go. Not that you're counting, but you're counting. (laughs) What other joys can we celebrate? Yes, Mary. We we thank God for the angels disguised as AAA who come to repair our tires when we are in need. Thanks be to God. Yes, Debbie. Debbie. Wayland's graduating on Tuesday. Thanks be to God. So is Hector. And it is a miracle. No. And we are thankful to God for all that God has done. Thanks be to God. Yes, Oscar. From uh, Roger and Linda Harvey, they're going to be celebrating an anniversary later this week. Oh, thanks be to God for Roger and Linda. Yay. Yes, I'll say. A birthday on Wednesday for your... For your daughter? Very nice. Thanks be to God. We are so thankful to God for you. How can we pray for one another this week? Yes, Marilyn. Your former sister-in-law passed away on Friday. And prayers for your nephew and his family and all who loved her. Lord, Hear our prayer. Yes, Oscar. Uh, Continued prayers for Miriam. I spoke to Armando yesterday, and uh, he asked that we continue to keep her in our prayers. She's going to start uh, therapy uh, this coming uh, Monday. Wow. Lord, hear our prayer. Yes, uh, you, one of you. We pray for your Uncle Peter. Lord, hear our prayer. Debbie? We pray for Debbie's daughter who has broken down at the rest stop just around Three Rivers. Lord, hear our prayer. Oscar? From uh, Laura Gilmore, continue prayers for uh, Jim Roberts and Marty Gilmore, and for Jim's brother, Dale, for health concerns. We also ask for prayers for the family of our friend, Pam Baker, who passed away this week. Lord, hear our our prayers. prayers. Uh, From Virginia White, continued prayers for Tyson and Ginger Listman. Lord, hear our Our prayers. prayers. Let us also, as as I mentioned at the beginning of the service this week, uh, we will hold our annual conference for the first time here in the Valley, as far as I know. Uh, It has been held in San Antonio. It's been in Corpus Christi, which is the reason I joined this conference. I was told I get to go to the beach for annual conference if I left Central Texas. Anyway, uh, but I'm thankful that I don't have to drive to Corpus Christi this year. Uh, But we have work to do for the church. We need to do some Christian conferencing to figure out how to work well together. So pray for your delegates. Pray for me and pray for the annual conference, please. Lord, hear our prayer. Others, let us go to God in prayer. God, you have called us to come to you, to share our lives with you, to bring our joys and our burdens to you, trusting that you watch over us. And so we come now and we ask for all who are suffering, Lord, for them to be in your care. Hold them close. For those who are living with COVID in their bodies or in their homes, we pray, Lord, for your healing. We pray for your patience to rain down on them. We pray, Lord, for all who are not well. We pray for those who grieve this morning, for those who are Filled with worry, Lord, give them the assurance of your presence. For those who are anxious and troubled, remind them of your love. Remind them how much we love them. 
For those who will be traveling to the Rio Grande Valley this week, Lord, we ask that you would keep them safe, watch over them, give them travel mercies. For our young people who are traveling to Weimar, Lord, keep them in your eye and give calm to parents who are anxious with worry. For members of this congregation who are absent, Lord, we ask that you would watch over them. For members of this congregation who are tired, Lord, we pray that you would give them rest. For those who are anxious, give them peace. For those who need this hour more than they even are willing to express, revive them, Lord. For our community, we ask that you give us Give us peace, Lord. There has been a great deal happening over the last few days. And there are those who t attempt to make us feel isolated and alone, to make us feel vulnerable, to make us feel weak. Lord, watch over this community. Watch over our law enforcement officials. Watch over our first responders, our firefighters, our emergency medical technicians. Watch over our healthcare professionals here who are tired. Keep your eye, Lord, on students and parents who now have a lot more time together, a lot more time to fill with activities. In our nation, Lord, there are people who just see their side and everyone else is wrong. Our nation was founded on the belief that you are our foundation, you are our rock. And so in you, Lord, let us find a way to live together and to work together and to work more toward this more perfect union. Lord, we ask that you would send your spirit anew to your church. For those of us who have found ourselves complacent, revive us, inspire us again. Send the fire of your spirit here and move us out of the places where we are comfortable and into the places where your kingdom is growing. For those who risk their lives because they confess you as their Lord, Lord, we ask for their safety. For our siblings around the world who are living with violent storms, who are living with the very ground beneath them shaking, who are living with political unrest, who are living with war, Lord, we hold them up to you. Yesterday was an anniversary of a young man in China who stood before tanks saying he had had enough. And we don't know what happened to him, Lord. We know that you do. Watch over those who are not free to worship you without fear. Watch over those who are not free to live with full agency over their lives. All of this we ask, all of this we pray in the name of the one who sent his spirit, who breathed on us and created the church, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
morning. First reading will be <clears throat> from Acts 1, and, and you can follow in the Pew Bible on um, page 118. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from Oh, from the beginning. Oh, do I, should I start again? Um, let's see, in the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you up into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. They then returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judith, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now, this man acquired a field with the reward for his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. This became known to all the residents of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their language Hakil Dama, that is, field of blood, for it is written in the book of Psalms. Let his homestead become desolate, and there will be no one to live in it, and let another take his position of overseer. So when one of the men who have, who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness for us to his resurrection. And now we will do Psalms, which you may find in the hymnal on page 826. Y'all respond, right? <laughs> oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Are there living both small and great? There go the ships, the Levithians, whom you formed to play in it. To you, to their food and due season. 
When you give them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good deeds. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth as it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to the Lord in whom I rejoice. Let sinners be consumed from the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Now, the epistle lesson, and you may follow in the, um, your Bible on page 158. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Amen. I invite you in body or in spirit to rise in honor of our gospel lesson. The gospel comes to us from John, from the 14th chapter, beginning in the 8th verse for a few verses and then jumping down to the 25th verse. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, have you been with me all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe in me. Believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask in my name for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Now verse 25. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. Amen. Please be seated and I ask that you join with me in our prayer for illumination. Lord, prepare me be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary.
The scripture says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages. Don't get any ideas. As the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered. Because each one heard them speaking in a native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are these not all who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language, Parthians, Medites, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Egypt, Phygeria, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed and saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, that's a little more exciting than your typical Methodist service. I'll do what I can. The disciples were, in fact, exactly where Jesus had told them to be. They were in Jerusalem waiting. Like you do. They didn't even have their phones with them, so they couldn't, you know, read Facebook while they were waiting. They were told to wait until the promise of the Father had come to them. There were others in Jerusalem who were gathered as well for this holy festival. And when they gathered for this holy festival, they told the story. They all knew the story, but they told the story every year. When we were gathered together at the base of the mountain, we waited for Moshe to come down with the word, the Devarim. And when Moses came down the mountain, when Moshe returned, his face shined, radiated, burned with the glory of God. God left a mark on Moshe and gave him the Ten Commandments, gave him the Devarim, and God's nation, the people of Israel, were created. They became the Lord's people, and the Lord was their God. That's the way the covenants work. That's covenant language. They waited, and they waited, and then God's glory was abundantly present in the person of Moshe. Moshe gained them the law, as I said, and they became God's people. The Jewish people celebrated this festival, this festival of Shavuot, exactly 50 days after the first day of Pesach, or Passover. It's the festival of the weeks, so there are seven days of seven weeks, or seven weeks of seven days, seven being the number of wholeness or completeness. So after the whole time, after the fulfilling of God's time had happened, they celebrated that God gave them the Torah. 
and they came back to Jerusalem. The pilgrims came back to Jerusalem. Those who lived in Jerusalem came back and went to the temple again, and they celebrated together, usually with a singing and dancing and, and celebrating the Torah. And there's a pretty big feast because, you know, the people of God like to eat. We, we enjoy a good food every now and again. Uh, and, and they would celebrate that they were God's people and the Lord was and is their God. I wonder why they were so surprised that the spirit of God showed up. They were celebrating that God showed up and then God showed up and they were taken aback. What is this that's happening? It's interesting because I think we, we've become so familiar with this story that we think of it as a nice little gentle breeze. There was a nice breeze blowing and, you know, people started speaking and maybe they had a matchstick above their heads. That's not what we're talking about here. It says a violent gust of wind came and filled the room and blew them out of it. The disciples were sitting there and then they weren't. <laughs> Then they were surrounded by these other people watching these tongues as a fire above their heads and they were all speaking and each one heard each other in their own language. Surely the presence of the Lord is in that place and they were confused, they were overwhelmed, they were uncomfortable. I got to tell you, if all of you start talking at once in different languages with a little fire or tongue of fire above your heads right now, I am going to freak out. Especially if it's not happening to me. I'd be like, why do they get the Holy Spirit? Yeah, it's a big thing that happens. And in fact, it's so overwhelming. It's so confusing that the people are like, well, they're obviously drunk. I like that that's where they went. Well, they're obviously drunk. And they said, no, it's only nine in the morning. That can't be. Peter has to get up and to explain. And I love Peter's sermon. Not just because 3,000 people were baptized, but because it's a great sermon. He says, no, these guys aren't drunk. This is what God said was going to happen. Why are you surprised by this? God said, I am going to pour out my spirit on this, on this place. And you won't even recognize it. The spirit came and blew them out of the room. And Peter says, your young people will have visions and they will prophesy. But it's infinitely more interesting to me that he says that the older generation will dream dreams. Now, I don't want to get too stereotypical, but sometimes when we talk about the older generation in the church, we end up talking about those people who are, we, we like to call them the Back to Egypt Committee, those people who remember the great glory of the church. You remember back in the day when the church used to be awesome? Y'all know who I'm talking about? But, but Peter says, your older generation will dream dreams. See, the younger people are going to have visions. They're going to have these ideas about what they can get done. But God is going to give the older generation dreams, wild ideas about what God can do, crazy plans for what God can do. Your older generation will dream dreams. You see, God sent the Spirit. God's Holy Spirit came and blew them out of the room, rested tongues as a fire on top of them, gave young people visions of what they could accomplish, but also gave the older generation dreams that were wild and crazy, and the church was born. I have to say, church, you look really good for approximately 2,000 years old. Because today is your birthday. And God gives the young people visions of what we can accomplish, but God gives the older generation wild, crazy dreams that only God can fulfill. Hmm. The Holy Spirit continues, even now, to blow us out of the room. 
I don't know, maybe you have not experienced this yet, but I have found that there's a reason I call the Holy Spirit that pesky Holy Spirit, because just when I think I'm comfortable, just when I get complacent, God, the Holy Spirit moves me exactly where I don't think I want to be. God pushes me right on out of my comfort zone and says, hey, by the way, this thing that you feel really passionate about, why don't you do something about it? This fire that I've lit in you, why don't you go and do something about that? And I think, but really, surely there's somebody more qualified. Surely, surely, as Peter said, surely there's somebody who's better at this than me. And yet, filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter preached a sermon, and 3,000 people were baptized that day. 3,000 people were baptized that day. I'm just going to ask you, has the Holy Spirit ever made you uncomfortable? Has the Holy Spirit ever made you uncomfortable? Because if not, I'm here to tell you, get ready, it's coming. That's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit says, I know that you're in this great place, but let me just go ahead and kick you right on out. Because you have work to do. But you're not going to go alone. Because the church is with you. Thanks be to God that the Holy Spirit moves us out of our complacency, moves us out of our comfortable rooms, moves us out of our comfortable languages and says, by the way, go. Go and teach and baptize and make disciples of all the nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says, now it's time to get to work. Now you are born, you are gifted, and you are sent. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello. Please stand as you're able. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the, Almighty, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one, one being with, with the Father. Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now seated and I invite our ushers to come forward as it is time to give back to God's, to God, what is God's, our tithes and our offerings. Uh, I normally say that my favorite way to receive your tithe and offering is a personal visit during the week. Um, however, this week is crazy and I'm only here one day. Uh, so I will see you next week, but uh, you are welcome to give via check, via 
cash, via online giving, or however it works for you. Let us pray. God of abundance and providence, we thank you for all that you have given us. We pray that you would receive this offering of your people, that you would bless it and use it to bring your kingdom. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our substitute special music this morning will be Holy Spirit, Living Breath of God, accompanied by Ryan Clark on the euphonium and Sergio on the piano. <laughs>
Yeah, we can clap. That was beautiful. <laughs> you to turn in your hymnals to page 12 where you will hear or find our, our invitation and prayer of confession. Hear this invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repents of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, and in that spirit, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we confess, we confess that, that we have, have not loved, loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have, have failed, failed to be an obedient church. church. We, we have, have not, not done, done your will. We, we have, have broken your law. law. We, we have, have rebelled, rebelled against your love. You. We, we had not loved our neighbors, and we, we have, have not, not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive, forgive us, we pray. pray. Free, Free us for, for joyful obedience. obedience. Through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. And now as those who are free and reconciled to God and each other, I invite us to remain seated and share signs of peace to our neighbors. I promise I'm almost ready to let y'all go free. Almost. We're on page 13 now in your hymnals. As we pray together the great Thanksgiving. In just a moment. I'm going to have to have lessons, Dr. Austin. I don't know how to do this well. <laughs> that sort of seems to defeat the purpose if I'm trying to keep my germs off of my hands. <laughs> but I'm with you. I'll try that next time. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right. It's a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. All creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the redemption we await in joyful hope with all your creatures. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power, power and might. might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. He is the living hope in whom we put our trust. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from the slavery of sin and death. And you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said to them, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup and again he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said to them, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. 
And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, has died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of Christ that we may be for the world. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one source, one loaf, we who are many are one in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we share in this bread, is this not a sharing in the body of Christ? Amen. When we share in this cup, is this not a sharing in the blood of Christ? Amen. Would those who are to assist please come now? start here. Bury the body of Christ and the bread of heaven. Bury the body of Christ and the bread of heaven. Seneca, the body of Christ and the bread of heaven. Bury the body of Christ and the bread of heaven. Elizabeth, the body of Christ and the bread of heaven. Set here, the body of Christ and the bread of heaven. Body of Christ and the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ and the cup of salvation. <laughs> Thanks. Amen. Now we just... You're my bread server. The gloves gave it away. runner if I run low yeah we've got two bread okay okay this is what happens when Diane is not here I want to let you know that all of the bread is gluten-free if you are gluten sensitive so everybody is, is welcome to this table without fear without worry you will be received here as our scripture said today, all we believe that all who call upon God's name are saved. This is not my table. It's not a United Methodist table, but this is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you are welcome. Come and receive the gifts of God. You will be given a piece of bread and you can take the bread and dip it into the juice uh, 
and receive the elements together, or if you would feel more comfortable, we have the smaller glasses of juice as well. I want to remind you that our altar rail uh, offering today will go to support our hospitality ministry in the Welcome Center. Won't you come now to receive the gifts of God? to take me just a Anybody wish to receive it? There's Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Touch us with your spirit and ignite us with faith and power. 
Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we sing our closing hymn, it is uh, number 334, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. I want to remind you that you are welcome to come to the chancel and to pray or to pray where you are seating, where you are seated. And if you want me to pray with you, just let me know by opening your hands or throwing something at me. So it would be my honor to come and pray with you. If you want to talk about where you are in your relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm here to talk with you. If you want to talk with me about what it means to become an official member of this congregation, I am here to talk with you. In body or in spirit, I invite you to rise and let us sing together, Sweet, Sweet Spirit, number 334. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face. that we're going to have to replace the candles that were giving us just the spark of Jesus before. They are on the way. I heard today from the manufacturer, the Holy Spirit will be present with us in form next week, we hope. Um, I want to remind you, next week is the potluck. I want your food. And uh, also I want pictures of you and your fathers. So send those here. Go now. Go into the uncomfortable places. Go where God has sent you. Go where the Spirit of the Lord leads you and do the work that God has called you to do. Love each and every person in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.